Good morning, everybody. How are you doing? Good to see you all. I've not been on here for a while, so I thought I'd uh, jump in in time for Christmas because Christmas equals craft. Um, I hope you've already had a bit of a head start on making some gifts. I can't say that I've done that many because um, it's pretty busy around here, but um, I've got a few ideas and some hopes that I'll be able to whip up some gifts in the last week, probably, as always. Um, so this was something that I came up with um, probably a couple of months ago now, and then I actually found it quite hard to buy the hot water bottles to put inside them, but I've found them all now. They're back in back in the shops. I think it's been quite um, quite a big thing to buy this year, what with everyone trying to save money on their bills. So hot water bottles are all the rage. And then I've just been creating lots of different colour covers for them. I'm just in the process of doing this one. So I thought I'd pop on today and then talk you through how I've made them and then maybe give you hopefully some inspiration. The thing I like about them is obviously hot water bottles you may already have at home and you may have a cover that's looking a bit old and you'd like to replace. I think they make a really nice gift. Um, and also you can use a small amount of yarn so you can actually just use scraps that you have at home. Hi, Irene. Um, if you um, don't crochet already, you de you definitely, I'm going to kind of rush through kind of how to make them. Sorry, I just dropped it on the floor. Um, so you, you will need to know how to crochet a little already. But when this video finishes, I'll pop into the chat some videos that I've previously done for the virtual village hall. And actually, I've got a nice video on my YouTube now. I had some nice, um, some cameraman come in and film me doing a proper um, video. Um, a couple of weeks ago, which I haven't really had a chance to share. So I'll I'll pop that on um, on the chat now. And so if you haven't learned to crochet already, then you can have a little go at crocheting. So the first thing you need to do, obviously, is get hold of some water bottles. Now, it's quite hard if you're buying them online. They don't seem to give you dimensions, which I found a little bit frustrating. So I'll kind of give you a little bit of reference here. So this small version here is the 500 mil size one. So I didn't see those so much in shops. Um, I've seen this more online. I thought this was just like a nice cute version, um, especially for someone who maybe wants more than one hot water bottle. Then the next size is more of your kind of standard size like this. And that's your one litre version. And then you often see them even bigger in the, I saw some yesterday in Home Bargains actually, um, and they were the two litre versions and they're a lot bigger than this. So obviously the first thing you really need to do if you're about to make hot water bottle covers is get hold of the hot water bottles uh, because they all come in different sizes. And of course there's also those really long ones now that you put around your neck and things. So you'd have to adapt your pattern, sorry if I clean this a bit quickly, um, to suit what size uh, hot water bottles you are able to get hold of. Hi Shirley too. Um, so um, then what you're gonna do is create a chain that is the width of your uh, hot water bottle. And I know this is going to be in reverse, but I had real problems today mirroring my screen. And I've had, to, I only actually jumped on the computer a few minutes ago because I had some problems with it. So unfortunately, you're going to have to watch this in reverse. But like I said, it's not really aimed at beginners. You would need to have a basic understanding. Maybe this will be very useful for left handed crocheters who are watching this the wrong way around. So all I'm going to do is make a chain, and I'm not really going to count it, I'm just looking to make one that is the width of my hot water bottle, so this length here, plus a little bit obviously on either side so it fits in you know, with ease, it's not too much of a squeeze. So I've, I think from memory, these plain ones that I've done which in this process were about 24 stitches. But like I said, I just made the chain first because it all depends. I'm, I'm using a chunky yarn, by the way. That's all I use. I love chunky yarn. Um, but obviously, if you're using a DK, you may need about 40. And um, you're just going to chain away. And then you're just going to keep putting it up against your hot water bottle until it's the right size. They're pretty stretchy. So you could make it suit your bottle afterwards. Let's have a little look. All right. So I'm just lay laying this across the bottle. And it's just a little bit longer either side. I feel happy that that's going to be a good size. That's going to allow obviously for a, a filled hot water bottle as well, which will increase its size quite a lot. So I've got like about a centimetre either side or a total of a, an inch, about half an inch either side extra on my chain. Then all I did was I personally love a half treble crochet. It's just my favourite stitch ever. So I just did that many, many times. So for that stitch, you skip two 
and then you do a yarn over and then you go in to the third chain, you pick up thread and you yarn over and you pull through three. That's the half treble crochet. But of course, lots of people have other favourites. I would suggest if you want to enjoy making these and you want to make a load of them before Christmas, just get familiar with one stitch and then just do that over and over again. And then the idea is you're going to make something like a little scarf because you want something that's going to be, unfortunately, I've put all mine together. I've made a miniature version. So imagine you're going to make something that's ultimately going to be folded in half and your hot water bottle, the whole thing, including the, the funnel, sorry, the, the neck is going to fit inside. So literally, I just keep crocheting over and over again until I have and the right amount of length for kind of the, the ooh, I keep dropping everything today, the height and the width or the height and the, the two heights of the hot water bottle cover. So yes, yeah, so I obviously won't make you watch me make that, but as you can imagine, I would just go along, turn the corner, go back and forth and back and forth. Now, obviously I will show you that you could always change your colors. So at any point during the process, if you wanted to make a stripey one, you would just wait till you get to the end of the row. I'm just going to skip a few here. So it looks like I get to the end of the row, just so you don't again have to wait. Skipping a load. There we go. You should be going in every hole. Right, got there. Then the way you change the colour is just when you've got those three on. So you're at the last stage of your stitch. You grab your new colour, which mine is in a bit of a mess. Let's find the end. Here we go. And then instead of pulling through your original colour, you pull through your new colour, like so, okay? And then you do your starter chains, the height chains, with your new colour, one and two. And then you flip it, and then off you go, putting the stitches in the new colour. The good thing about this project is you can have all these ends at the end, and it doesn't really matter. Uh, because ultimately it's kind of like a cushion and inside there is a little bit of mess. I do need to tidy them up a little bit, but there is a little bit of mess inside, but no one will ever see that, which is my favourite kind of project, not like a blanket where both sides are visible. One idea, if you are a little bit more kind of confident with crochet, and I'm going to finish this one off in front of you, is to change your stitches every row. So here I've done some little, what I call like little V stitches. Here I've done some little granny stripes. Here I've done some uh, double trebles, um, all sorts of different stitch. Here I've done like a wave stitch. So each row I was just changing my stitch and doing something different and obviously changing the colour mm -hmm. so that it looked really fancy. And then oh, I'll show you the, the putting it together and then I'll show you the final stage, which is putting the ribbon in. So when you're happy with the size of your um, little rectangle that you make, let me just get some yarn ready, two sets. Can do that. When you're happy that your rectangle will fit your hot water bottle cover, you can just finish your work off. So that's my finishing loop there. That's the last stitch I did. Just going to pull that end through there. So it's nice and tight. And then I'm just going to put the two sides together. And then I'm just going to be double crocheting those together. Or again, whatever stitch you like. I'm just trying to think where it would be best to start. I want to go all the way round. I actually want to make it look kind of like I did here, where I actually added a bit of pink on the top too. So I think from memory, I just started up in the top right there and I actually did the colour first. So I'm just pulling through the new colour, chaining two, or chaining one, sorry, so I'll just do a double crochet at this point. All right. And then I'm going in, pulling through, yarn over, and pull through two. I'm going to go around, just make a little trim on it first. Because so I think when I did this, I managed to do it continuously, which I love. I, I'm always trying to think of ways of not weaving in many ends after. So sorry, you can't see much there. So I'm just putting the putting a little trim on the top before I start putting it together. Okay, so that's my little trim. It's gonna be on the top, popping them together now, holding it on its side, getting these ends inside because I want them to disappear. 
and then I'm just going to be matching up the side stitches. So I'm just looking for a little edge I can go into, going through one side, going through another. It is always a bit difficult on the side. You've got to be extra careful because obviously they are they're the sides of stitches rather than the top, so it's a little bit less clear. But again, like I said, an easy product like this, you don't have to worry too much. So then I'm just pulling that through, yarn over, and then pulling through to finding my next one in. If I want to make my life easier, I could have done a border first. But again, like I said, with Christmas coming so quickly, I, uh, I'm just kind of making it a little bit quicker. So it's going under, under one side, under the other, picking up the thread pulling it through. So I'm just doing a double crochet and I'm going to put all that side together. Because I quite like continuing my thread, I'm just going to add an extra bit of turquoise on the bottom. So I'm just going to do a small stitch along the loops at the bottom there. I'm going to come back up this side and then I'm going to finish off by doing a stitch along this top edge so that I've got this trim on the front and the back. And then I'm going to pop my little hot water bottle inside all right so that's kind of like i said the simple process i will quickly explain how i did some of those more colorful ones in a moment for those people who are um, able to kind of crochet a little bit you know a few more stitches and um, we're up for learning some more um, and then um, and then the final bit so when i've got my little pouch like that so a little pouch like that is i'm just finishing it off with a little bit of ribbon and a darning needle I'm finding where the neck is, which is about by here. And then I'm just going to go under stitches. So I'm just going to go under and through. Under and through. So I've got pink needle on pink thread. So you can just about see. Oh, I don't want to start by there, actually. I want to start in the centre because I want the bow to be there. So let's start again. So here, up, down, up, down. So whether you've got big stitches or small stitches, you can always you can still do this. Make sure you obviously leave a little bit for the bow here. I'm just using some scraps of ribbon that I found in the cupboard. So hopefully, like I said, trying to be quite resourceful with this project um, and trying not to go out shopping and buy too much stuff that I don't really need. So it's going all the way around. If your stitches aren't as big, you'll still be able to find little holes. That's a good thing. That's the good thing about crochet, is they do always leave little holes, so it just might be a little bit slower than what I'm doing now. Final one, back to pink. And going round, 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 round. So like I said, nice simple way, no difficult patterns here. Just nice, easy way. Is that the centre? Mm, maybe there. So my ribbon now. It's gone all the way around. I can take my ribbon off, my needle off, making them even, and then popping a bow in the top, like so. There we go. And that one's now gift ready and nice and colourful for someone who likes colourful things. I particularly like that one, so that might be staying with me, that one. Um, or maybe Gwen, my dog, I think she'd appreciate that because I'm also worried that she's going to be a little bit cold this winter. Um, another one, if you may be someone who makes lots of granny squares and then just has piles of them and never knows what to do with them. Obviously, the square shape isn't ideal, but can you see what I did here? I'd made a granny square that was the right size and then I'd just gone over the top and I just created a few more rows. I think if I was to do it, do it again, because I don't really like that this is sticking up, I would have continued to do even more rows or maybe make more rows on the top and the bottom. So this is the middle and there's just some kind of um, some of my favourite stitches on the top and the bottom. So creating two little rectangles and then I would have put those together, sewn together the sides, threaded through the ribbon and then had a granny square one. And like I said, you could also use several granny squares if you get the right width maybe three or four of them in a row. It just depends on what size hot water bottle covers you get hold of and um, what sort of design that you like the look of. But again, could be a good use of those piles of granny squares that you have around the place. Uh, this one is a slightly trickier stitch, but again, if you like the look of it, 
you can have a little look into the stitch. It's called corner to corner. So what that means, I can't remember where I started now. I think I started up here somewhere, but you build your rows and diagonals. So I had to stop, I think when I got to about nine or 10, and then I had to keep building. So I ended up with a long rectangular scarf like this, a stripey one. And then I've put it together with this gray, but I do think that looks quite cool. But again, a similar effect could be achieved with stripy straight lines really easily by doing that technique that I showed at the beginning. This would be a little bit more if you wanted to learn something quite new. Corner to corner is quite a fun stitch, but it does take a little bit of getting used to. And then finally, just in case I've got any sewers online, um, I did actually make these as well. These are more for the kids, but these were super simple. It's basically a drawstring bag that we um, quilted first. For those people who do proper quilting, uh, they might be a little bit horrified by my straight lines, uh, but I was doing this with a bunch of eight year olds, so they were super happy with them. And so what we did is we just quilted a little bit of fabric and then we just made a little drawstring top at the, the top there with the excess fabric. And then we pop that in and then close that up. But again, the texture's really nice and the kids really enjoyed those and of course, You've, hopefully you've got like a nice big fabric stash at home that you could lean on to create these with, uh, like I said, not too much trouble. So, yeah, let me know if you have any questions. It's been a bit of a quick one today. Like I said, I hope to actually put my camera down so I could show you a little bit more. But technology was uh, not, not on my side this morning. But, um, yeah, I'm back again, doing some crackers soon and something else as well so two more festive ones so you get to see me a couple more times and in a minute i'll post those extra videos just for those people who don't know how to crochet yet and then hopefully get you started and then you can join some future videos all right have a good afternoon thanks for joining bye